All right, welcome to part two of how to buy and sell real estate for financial freedom. In part one, we talked about how to make some money as a wholesaler, but a wholesaling turned out to be just a job that you had to do over and over again and it never ended. Now we're going to talk about the next level after that in this part two, and that's how to fix and flip. But there's a catch to fix and flip also. So at the end of this episode, we'll finish with how to buy and hold. Stick with me because there's still that revelation that I promised you veteran seasoned investors, and I'm going to get to it in part three. Welcome to part two, how to buy and sell real estate for financial freedom. Thanks for sticking with us. As you know, I've been dealing in real estate for over two and a half decades. I've bought a house just about every four to five days. That's a hundred houses a year. And that's over 2000 houses in my career, in my hometown, in or about. So I know a little bit about how to coach people through this process. And one of the things I have to do as a coach is to point out to you the severe importance of what you're missing so that you'll go and tackle the issue. So what I want to impress upon you right now, if you're a wholesaler, is what a little bit of change can do for your bottom line, what that change is and how much it's worth to you. And I'm going to use the same example we were using before in part one to get this across to you. The difference between being a wholesaler and a fix and flip guy is funding. You got to have the funding. The only reason you're stuck as a wholesaler is you don't know how to get the money or are afraid to get the money or otherwise don't think you can get the money. And I'm here to change that for you. But let me show you how much it's worth to get the money. In that scenario we used in part one, you had a house that you could purchase that was worth $200,000 after repairs. That is the ARV, the after repaired value is 200,000. The property needed 30,000 in repairs. And so we negotiated in this example to buy the property for 100,000. So knowing that they needed 30,000 in repairs, 200,000 minus 130,000 left us as a wholesaler $70,000 that was potential profit. Now we needed to decide how much of that $70,000 could we get for our position in this contract so that we could sell it to a, a person who had the funds to complete the entire transaction, the rehab and the sale and make some money. We decided that you could get $20,000 because if you left $50,000 for your wholesale buyer, that would be good enough to make this all work. So what did you miss because you didn't have the funding? You missed this $50,000. Instead of making $20,000 in a wholesale profit, you could have made the entire seventy. dollars This twenty dollars plus this fifty, dollars you could have made the entire $70,000 if you only had this. So. I'm trying to impress upon you how important money is to these equations. And the sooner you learn how to raise private money or find partners with money or whatever the case is, the sooner you'll be moving from a $20,000 per transaction to $70,000 per transaction. But remember in part one how we talked about the problem with bird dogging and wholesaling was that it was an endless job. As soon as you completed one transaction, you had to start another transaction or else your income just stopped. And you had to do it over and over and over again and there was no end. Well, fix and flip is the same thing. You find a house, you fix it, you flip it, you make your money, but that deal's over and there's no more money to be made unless you go find another house, find some more funding, do it all over again. Again, bird dogging, wholesaling, fix and flip, we're in the same hamster wheel, running all the time. Got a deal, it's over. Got to get a new deal. Do that deal, it's over. Got to get a new deal. Do that deal, it's over. Now we move into the buy and hold. And this is where wealth building and legacy wealth starts. The buy and hold strategy. Why not all buy and hold properties are the same. We all buy and hold for the same reasons. Appreciation, depreciation, longevity, or the chance for a forever investment that goes on and on until we decide it's over and to play the tax write off game. This is why you want to move into the buy and hold and start building wealth and building financial freedom so that one day you might be able to sit down and, and watch your bank account grow even while you're sleeping. The buy and hold strategy 
moves you in a direction where you start to own your freedom. You start to acquire more and more money and more and more cash flow streams so that you do not have to work every day and you have time for family, you have time for travel, you have time for all those bucket list items that you may be wanting and willing to try just never had the time. Money will not be the problem. As with most of the stories that we investors tell, we conclude the money problem pretty quickly. It's the time problem that keeps us in the chair, that keeps us from doing what we want to do. Because we think only we can do this and that if we're not in that business, somehow that business fails. And I'm going to show you how to move into your financial freedom and find that time. So in the buy and hold strategy, step number one is to go out and find a property that you can buy 20 to 30% below market value. Then you need to buy that property using financing that's to your favor. Usually it's longer term, decent interest rate, and it goes for you know, 10, 15, 20 years, and it's set. You use these favorable terms to create a spread between what you owe and what you can collect in rents called cash flow, your positive cash flow. Again, positive cash flow is the difference between what you owe every month and what you have coming in. The trick is in buy and hold is to mitigate your liabilities because you're responsible for everything from the back fence to the front mailbox, everything in between. If it breaks, cracks, or doesn't work, you got to pay to get it fixed. You can begin with just one property, but you can keep adding property after property after property, increasing your cash flow more and more as time goes along. And in theory, you should be paying down your debt using the renter's money. And then the rents over time should be going up while the values of the houses are going up. So you're getting increases on both sides, appreciation and rents going up. And, and all, the, all the while, you're getting to use the tax benefits of the depreciation. And how you look at this is that your renters are buying this property for you as time goes by. So as a landlord, you're adding properties one at a time and building your cash flow until at some point you reach a mass to where you don't have to work in this business anymore. You can step back and work on the business. You have a manager or a management company in between you and the tenants and the problems. You can manage your manager or manage your software from anywhere in the world on a cruise ship or on vacation or while you're hunting or while you're fishing. So that's the goal of the buy and hold is to work yourself out of a job into a, I like to say, even higher than CEO. You know, the CEO still has to show up at a job every day and make sure everything's working. There's someone above the CEO and it's called the owner of a real business, a business that functions without him at all because that's the CEO's job and that's where we're trying to get. In the immortal words of Mel Gibson, it's all about the freedom, but... Let's try not to get disemboweled while we get there. Hey, do me a favor and be sure and crush that like button and share this episode. In part three, I'm going to deliver that revelation. We talked about the four basic strategies, bird dog, wholesaling, fix and flip, and now buy and hold. Buy and hold was the first inkling of a time we started talking about building wealth and financial freedom. But there's a fifth strategy that hardly anyone sees. They overlook it all the time. It should go right after wholesaling and before buy and hold. And we're going to talk about it in the next episode, how to buy and sell real estate for financial freedom, part three.